Hi DLR, it's Joe from Alarm Grid, and today we're going to talk about how to troubleshoot a low battery condition on your Vista panel. There's a bunch of different things that can give you a low battery condition on the panel, but there's two main culprits to this problem. One is that the battery could be getting old, and it's not holding a charge, and that you just simply need to replace it. That's an easy fix. The other issue that could happen is that the panel itself may be going bad, and it's not sufficiently charging the battery, and in that case, you would actually have to replace the whole panel itself, which is kind of a pain, but it is what it is. Let's go through the different troubleshooting steps that you'll need to go through, though, to figure out whether it's the panel that's giving you the issue or if it's the battery that's giving you the issue. The first thing that you're going to need to know before you jump into this is some of the symbols on your multimeter. If you take a look at our multimeter, we have two different Vs on this. One of the Vs has a straight line on top and a dotted line underneath. That tells us that that is to check DC voltage. The other V has a wavy line next to it. That tells, that tells us that that's to check AC voltage. So if we're having an AC or a low battery condition on the panel, really the first thing that you want to do in your troubleshooting steps is check and confirm that the AC power going to the panel is good. So to do this, to start, we're going to set our multimeter to AC voltage 20, and then we're gonna take our probes and we're gonna connect them to the AC terminals on the panel. Now, AC doesn't have polarity, so it doesn't matter which probe you attach to which terminal. So if we go and connect these, you'll see that we're getting 17.1819 volts AC at our AC panel connection, which is great. If we found that this was lower, or if it was 16.5 or lower, we next we'd wanna check the wire integrity, and then we wanna check the transformer that's making this connection to the AC terminals. If we were to do this, I don't have alligator clips on my probes, but to check the wire integrity, we would power the panel down 100%. So we'd undo the battery. And then we need to unplug the AC uh, leads from the terminals and then connect our probes to those wires with them unplugged. Our voltage should be relatively close to what we read when it was on the panel. If it's not, that tells us that there's an issue on the wire or on the transformer itself. So let's say that we found that the voltage drops when we've removed this wire from the, uh, or that the voltage is still low when we remove the wire from the, from the panel, we want to then check to see if our transformer is good or not. So to do that, I'm going to unplug the transformer from our power and I'm going to remove the wires from the transformer. I'm going to reconnect the transformer back to power. And then with my multimeter still on 20 volts AC, I'm going to connect my probes to the terminals on the back of the transformer. And we're getting 17.6 volts. So that's telling us that this transformer is good and that if there was an issue, it would be on the wire if we found that before. If you're finding that the voltage coming from the transformer is no good, the next step would be to check if the outlet the transformer is plugged into is providing sufficient voltage to the transformer. If it is, and the transformer is still getting a bad reading, that tells you that the transformer itself is no good. So to check the outlet, what you're going to have to do is set your voltage to 200 for AC voltage checking because all of the outlets in your house, they're going to be 110 to 120 AC for these transformers and just about everything else. It's very unlikely that you're going to bump into a 240 volt circuit, but if you see anything like that around, leave it alone and don't touch it. The transformer, again, it wouldn't even be able to be up. <laughs> the transformer, again, it wouldn't even be able to be plugged into a 240 volt circuit. And that's as far as we're going to go with that. So we have our multimeter set to 200 volts for the check AC. And if I take my probes and I stick them into the outlet, 
that my transformer is plugged into. I'm getting 117.7 volts, which tells me that this is a good outlet. So with that all confirmed, we know that our transformer is good, our wire is good, and the connection is intact. So I'm gonna reattach the wires back to my transformer. And the panel's powering up. The next step, if we're still getting a low battery condition after this, would be to check to see if any of the other wires in the panel are causing the issues for the panel's uh, charging ability. If one of these wires has a staple through it, if there's some integrity problems, it could potentially drain the AC and it could interfere with the battery charging. The way to check this would be to take your probes, set it to voltage AC for 20 volts, and you'd want to connect them to these two terminals right here. Now you'll probably need a second person to do this because one person is going to have to stand and hold these, these uh, probes on the terminals while the other person goes ahead and removes each wire from each terminal. And what you're gonna look for is to see if your voltage jumps up when you remove one of the wires. If it does jump up, that tells you that that connection is causing an issue with the power on the panel. From there, you wanna go and check to see if the wire integrity is good. So you really have to trace it out, see if there's a staple going through it, maybe it's crimped somewhere, maybe it's going through a box, an electrical box of some sort, and it's having an issue. That's pretty much what that's gonna tell you. If this is all good, then the next step would be to check the charging circuit for the battery. So to do that, because our battery charging circuit is 12 volts DC, we're gonna to have to switch the multimeter to DC voltage checking. So from here, as I said before, our DC is the V with the straight line and the dotted line. I'm gonna set this up to 20, because that'll cover 12 obviously. And then I'm going to take my probes and stick them in to the battery charging uh, leads. So I'm going to take red and put it in red. I'm going to take black and put it in black. And as you can see, we're getting 13.64 volts. This tells us that this charging circuit is good and that the panel is sufficiently charging the battery. One of my connections may be a little loose, which is why we're getting this flickering. The next thing that you'd want to do if you confirm that there's still an issue after going through all these troubleshooting steps with the battery charging is remove the panel 100% from the box and hang it or put it on a piece of cardboard or anything that isn't gonna conduct electricity. The panel, the board itself is very sensitive and as you can see, all the circuitry is open. So if you put this on something that's metal, you could short the panel out and you'll just have to get a new panel after that because it'll be damaged. But just to show you the way to remove the panel, first you wanna completely power it off so there is no power going to it. Luckily we have one of these LT cables which has a barrel connector and I can just unplug this and it completely, completely powers the panel down. The next thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is you remove all the wires from the panel. We don't have any connection on our cable right now, there's no power going to it, so we know that our panel is 100% powered down. This panel actually has a Vista GSM4G cell card, which we will need to just simply unplug before we remove it, which has a little connection right there. Now these panels, they have two screws on the bottom, 
which you'll need to undo. The panel's now loose. If I just lift it up and remove it, it comes right out of the board. Now, whenever you handle one of these panels, you always want to touch the edges of the panel so you don't short anything out with static electricity. And from here, you can hang it or you can place it on a safe surface and with nothing else connected to the panel and it removed from the, the, the box itself, you can again check that circuit for the AC power to make sure that it's getting the right reading. And you can again check your battery leads to make sure that they're actually outputting the proper voltage. If you find that there's an issue in either place, likely the panel is bad and you'll just simply need to replace it. If you do have any questions though about testing your panel, the power connections, or anything with the multimeter, feel free to reach out to us, 888-818-7728. Head to our website, www.alarmgrid.com, or send us an email to support at alarmgrid.com. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to be notified when you post future videos, hit the notification button below and we'll send you an update when we do so. Thanks for watching and have a great day.